day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. You know what? This is the day that the Lord has made. We're now going into part C of where, of where we talk about being transformed into the image of Christ. You know, we said it before, Genesis. We were created in the image of God. huh? And we're supposed to be in transform as Christians into the image of his son which is the image of God, amen? And what we're talking about in our studies and previous studies, and you've been with us in some of the cases, we, we, we talk about factors of Chinatown. And Chinatown is like in San Francisco, some Chinatowns are in New York. And when, when you walk in the city of New York, you, you know that you're in the city of New York in the United States. And then you go to certain blocks and all of a sudden now that area becomes transformed and now you recognize you're no longer, well, you're still in the city, but now there's a cultural shift that occurred when you walked into the neighborhood called Chinatown. Why? Because it, it, it takes on the characteristics and traditions of that which they do in China, right? That's what you call Chinatown. So what we're saying is, what are the conditions that we walk into to being a Christian? And when we meet a Christian, and when people meet us, do they recognize that they have now moved from those who operate in the world way to those who operate in the spirit, operate in Christ, right? So one of the, and, and I would say I want to remind you all the time, is that, uh, and I want to try to remind you as much as possible, uh, as time permit, is that what's the image that you're supposed to portray? We talked about before in part B, sometimes we sit there and say, this is the way we go to church. We act, we go to church, we act. We, 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 we do that in front of different people. Some people act one way and we act another way in another in other people's way. <laughs> Why don't we just be consistent? So we don't have to lie or hide or sneak around, just be yourself. And I say it is all remember the fruits of the spirit. You're supposed to bear the fruits of the Spirit, which is in Galatians 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. You ain't gonna get a ticket for these things. I did want to make sure, temperance, and make sure you remember, is self-control. Faith really means faithfulness, meaning do what you say you're gonna do and do when you say you're gonna do it. The other one is I wanted to get clarified. Meekness means submissiveness, not to you, but to God. Not for, not for you to be submissive to people, but to God. Because at, um, I guess Abraham was meek. <laughs> Moses was meek, but Moses wasn't weak. Moses get off, go off, he had to go off it on you. Abraham went off if he had, he had to fight battles. So, but it's being submissive to God, submissive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. But the thing is that none of these can you get a ticket or be arrested for. And you can still love. Look, love is just making sure you love people to the point you don't hurt them. And that means you can still love your game. If you like football, if you like dancing, you like racing. You like, you like dressing up a certain way, you like you like potty, if that's what you like to do, do what those things you do. But just do it in love. Don't go in there and try to uh, take over or use somebody or hurt somebody. But those are types of the fruit. Those are, that's the image. When somebody comes around you, do, do, they, do they come away, do they walk away seeing, a, you know, hey, that's a good person. You know, that, that person uh, took time to listen to me, was patient with me, huh? That person uh, was gentle. That person was faithful. That person, that person was was meekness. That person was temperate. That person had self control. That person was patient with me. 
And they walk away with somebody who's not being selfish, or being rude or arrogant. They, they walk away with somebody who really cares. That's, and that's where that love comes from. Love is that compassion to other people. They don't walk, they, they, look, they don't walk into depression, they walk into joy. They don't walk into trouble, they walk into peace. <laughs> that's walking into the image of God. And I, I think I'll continue trying to remind you that uh, every time we do these studies. But in part C, we talk about the fact is most of us, I, and I, I consider and said, and I talked about it before, when we, we receive Christ, we, we receive his power. Not the power you talk about. You, we talk about power to, to control people, to manipulate, uh, manipulate people. No, we're talking about the power to, to be transformed, the power to bear these fruits that we talked about, the power to love people. Because look, you got to, some people don't even know how to love themselves, must love somebody else. But to love your enemy, you need that power. You need that power to fight the spirit that goes and try to manifest themselves in our lives and the people around us. We need that power to deal with that. We need the power and the, the, the tenacity to fight the fight, to fight the good fight of faith and life. Amen. So we we talk about that in the study. You come in here, part C. The fact is, learn to understand. You receive something. You receive the supernatural to deal with the natural. You deal with the you deal with the supernatural to deal with the unnatural. You know. And then we talk about the fact is that the, we have a tendency that when we we don't walk in the spirit, you know, we in a default, and they call it a default. You know, like a computer. We default. We reset back to the factory conditions and way. We default. We, we default back to sin. So we gotta learn to not default back. We gotta learn to keep moving forward because it's so easy for us to do that. And finally, it's not talking about relationships. Relationship is all about relationship. Who are you spending time with? God wants you to spend time with him. He, that's why he calls himself the Father. And he do that through Jesus Christ and leading in the Holy Spirit. So you, have, you want to learn to, to create a relationship with him. Spend time with him. Walk with him. And just bear these fruits. And I said, I told you before, you come as you are because he died for the world. With John 3.16, 3, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hey, look at this. That's what the word is saying. He loved you even when you were a sinner. You know what? He's with you even when you were a sinner. But he wants to connect and dwell in you. You know what I mean? So just remember that the fact is, is a relationship matter. If you're feeding, you know, I like the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread. The thing about it is, what are you feeding? You know you eat every day. What are you feeding your spirit every day? What are you feeding your mind every day? Because what you're feeding, what relationship you have on a consistent basis does matter. But I think more important if you have a relationship with God, led by the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, <laughs> you're in a great relationship. Start with that first, and I guarantee everything else will line itself up. Because that's what that Lord's Prayer said too. Seek ye first, huh? The kingdom of God. All right, I hope you enjoy part C, and I'll see you in part B. And we, I mean D, but we're going to continue to extend this word and learn what it means to be transformed into the image of God through Jesus Christ. Amen? Check you later. Bye-bye. Right. You're looking at doing something religiously versus a religion. And I think there's a distinction between the two. Yeah. To do something yeah. religiously yeah. Is, is just is just being you're disciplined, disciplined. and you and you're regimented, right. and, and you have a plan of attack, and you stick to it. And I think that's religiously, yeah. and I think that's all positive. I really do think that, and I think you have to be that way. I think well, I so. Think, I think yeah. that what really matters is, and I think if you, as part of the research we did on this verse, this issue came up. See what really matters is is the inward disposition of your heart. Come yeah. on now. See, see, there are people who have relationships, but they're bad relationships. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on. <laughs> they're antagonistic relationships. That's true. You That's know, true. They really That's try true. to keep the peace with one another. But the relationship is not one of oneness. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Yes. That's true. Yeah. So, so when I thought looking at David, 
one of the things that came up that really just kind of blew my mind was is that God told Samuel uh -huh. that I personally, Samuel, yeah. Yeah. have gone out and sought and found me a man. Come on. Come on. <laughs> After my own heart. Come on. <laughs> what I'm looking for, <laughs> not any external religion, I sit here in any fashion, what I'm looking for uh -huh. is a certain kind of heart. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, when, when I find the right kind of heart, <laughs> all the things that fall in place after that, it's going to be good. Because I know that all of this stuff, but I, I, I did a search on the word heart, and it's really a big thing because there's a lot of words. Yes, sir. But it seems to me that we don't understand that with, with God, this whole thing all is, is, is founded upon the inward heart condition of the man. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. So, so, so you see, when Jesus was doing these things, fasting and praying, he had a reason why he was doing that. Exactly. <laughs> now, if you're, if you're gonna do that, but your reason jacked up, uh -huh. <laughs> Charles and Pharisees did it, John's disciples yeah. did it, and they asked him, yeah. hey, I unstoppable fast all the time. Yeah. You, you know, and we, we touched on that not too many uh, weeks back, when you were talking about, um, the disciples fasting. Why were they? Why were they literally fasting? And uh, I don't know who ever came to a conclusion, but I thank God for the fast we're going on right now because we're starting to identify some specific behavior that might help us. Uh -huh. What was the purpose? Where, we have have we at some point, uh, you know, delineated, articulated, or listed the the reasons why we actually engage in this fast? I hope I'm not taking us off task, am I? Well, the only question. No, sir. I think, I think the other question I just have is that <clears throat> fasting, and, and that's a good, that's that's a that's a rabbit trail to go with. It's it's just part of your, your part of your life, right? I'm just saying this if it's part of, when you fast, right? What's the purpose of fasting? Well, I think what you're hitting on is something crucial to everything. It's not it's it's if you're just caught up in what. Yeah. Then, then you're really deceived on anything because you don't have an understanding of nothing. Yeah. There always has to be an understanding of why. Why? Why? What is the purpose? What is the agenda? What are they trying to accomplish? Why am I doing this? Not that I just do something because it's something to do, exactly. but why am I doing it? Right. Why? Right. What is the need? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, right. And, 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 and to Ella, I'm just saying is that to me, uh, I'm saying once again is relationship. And that's why I think Jesus brought in the concept of saying father. Father implies relationship. And I like the fact is that even raising your children, if you think about it, your children have a relationship as they grow from being a baby all the way up to their adulthood that affects their their mannerism and their way of life and their way of thinking, right? You remember we talked about a long time ago about sometime that you used to get disciplined by somebody else from the from you know somebody else that knows your family, right? And then and if you're not acting right, when they didn't they remind you of it, they was like, yeah, you know better than that. Yo, I know your family, I know your dad, I know your mama. You you you. And they were chastised no, I'm good. because that relationship no, I'll take a sausage biscuit. Father is, or your parents is different from what they see. And they were just chastised for that, for that right? Mm -hmm. And that same thing even in the military, right? There's just there's, there's codes of conduct. There's, there's, there's behavioral uh, discipline and mannerism, professionalism that they expect to see from you. And anytime you come out of that or walk away from that, that, you know, Brother Jackson, you know, if you're not behaving in a professionalism that is expected of you, from all the way from an airman to a chief, from a lieutenant all the way to a general, there is a behavioral aspect that, that that's supposed to be part of you. Right. You, you know what, you know what, Pastor, I'll say this. And first, I'm apologize because I didn't know I had a microphone on. And I was talking in the background while you was talking. I apologize for that, sir. I didn't know how I was doing that inadvertently. But 
Yeah, I know that's right. <laughs> hey, Marvin used to bring us one of those uh, yeah, breakfast bowls, man. I, I remember those things. Get them old grits and sauce and egg mixed together. You used to set, yeah. set the morning off, didn't it? Amen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, what I was going to say is, was, I think it's for subjugation. I, I, I think that fasting yes, for me is, is to bring my body and my disciplines Yes. to subjugate them to who I am because if I if I don't do something about me yes I'll think it's about me uh -huh. and I'll become undisciplined and allow my own inner self to think it's something of itself so I have to buffet it and bring it into subjection by denying it and and bring it into subject unto the spirit otherwise that battle, <clears throat> that warfare that, that I think Lee spoke of earlier, that that flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit is against the flesh and the one against another. And, 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 and if I don't fast to subjugate it, my flesh will rise up and take authority and it'll be the one that's running things. And so that's me now. I'm just talking about gender. No, no, that's, that's and, cause, and because I, I think I was born <laughs> with a being toward cockiness and arrogance. Uh -huh. And so, and so, if I don't bring myself in sub, into subjection and discipline myself and, and make myself do things and not do things that it wants to do, right? Then by default, I'm giving it the seat of authority, and it'll take over. That's me now. I don't know about y'all, but I, I have to do that. Yes. Sir. Well, I think it turns to that. Did we actually operate. Did you have something to say, Pastor? I want to cut y'all. I, I want to throw a little piece in there, you know, because I, because I, because I, I still want to be answering what Brother Jack was talking about that, you know, that dying to self daily, working with God daily, and and then I use the analogy of the family as well as the military. You remember um, that? You ever been in a situation where your parents told you that you're not going to eat your eat food today? You're gonna, you're gonna, you know, send you home, go to bed, or go to your room early. You, you miss a dinner or miss a meal? Right. Yeah, you yeah, ever that? <laughs> that and Jimmy, is that kind of like a fast? Because you will remember <laughs> the fact that you you miss a meal, right? You ever, you ever had that situation? Especially if you didn't want to eat the food that was put in front of you? You, 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 didn't, like what you, you didn't like what they had for you? Uh -huh. it, yeah, that's well, That's how it worked for some folks. My my parents would, hey, you gonna eat this? I don't care. I don't care if it's, don't care if it's gonna be all night. And that happened to me. You can sit here till midnight. You you can sit here till midnight. When you get up, that plate gonna be better be clean. Hey, my whole family went to sleep on me. They all went to sleep on me, and I I ended up eating. <laughs> live 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 red onions, baby. That's right. <laughs> that, that, got, that got reverse effect too because you still had to meditate. You sat there, didn't you? You, you Oh yeah. You won't go nowhere. That's where you were. And everybody That's was right. sleeping. You still there. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. you know you know you had to get up in the morning. You know it had to be clean by the time they got there. You might right. might have snuck and threw it away, but you also got hungry. And you know, and in this case, since we're using that, that an example, you know, and I did not defy what my parents said, you know, it, it was either I ate it or I sat there. And I think maybe based on, um, you know, what the bishop was talking about earlier, you know, that disposition of the heart, yeah, you know, you know, because I, that, that was what, and, and, and when we're talking about what God is saying, you know, uh -huh. the Lord is, is teaching us, but the word is telling us now, yeah, hey, this is what I said. Yeah. Now yeah. you either, deal with it and do what I ask you to do or them consequences are going to be great right. you know right and uh, and that's how I felt it was with my with my family because you know I, I couldn't lie to my parents hey if they asked me if I ate it I was going to tell them yes or no but yeah. hey that no that no I, I didn't want the consequences <laughs> so I just dealt with it and finally I acquiesced yes, you know sir. and I yielded Right. And, yeah. and I eat llama beans. I eat llama beans today, brothers. <laughs> <laughs> I love llama beans. <laughs> <laughs>